finally did it. I went and made a man pack portable RF system for 2 meter 440 HF tuner, the whole works. Let's take a look. As some of you know, I've been finally getting my amateur radio license. I'm in a course with a local club right now and uh, going to write the test in March. I decided to go with a, a local club because there's some interesting knowledge that the the good old Elmers have to share, so I thought it would be fun. But I decided to build this kit, and I thought you guys might like to take a look at it. So basically, the heart of the kit, first off, is our small QRP radio. This is the HF transceiver, AliExpress special, and an antenna tuner. Both have batteries on board and can run autonomously from the main battery pack. Pretty cool. I 3D printed this case system. Uh, I got it off of Thingiverse, but then I had to adapt it. I got him to upload the source files and uh, completely kind of redesigned it. And it came out pretty good in PETG. Uh, M3 by 10 fasteners, and I was away to the races. And this gives these uh, quite a bit of protection inside the case. So here we have a 2 meter uh, transceiver. This one needs to be plugged in, so I used XT60s. And I also have a 50 watt HF amplifier. If we really wanted to amplify our signal instead of the low wattage, we can go to 50 watts. And uh, yeah, compatible with tuner, HF. Yeah, pretty cool. Really happy how it turned out. Nice and modular, I like that. Also, super durable. But we can't just talk on the radio. We need to do digital modes. That's where this comes in. We have a DigiRig mobile that allows us to hook various things like our tablet, our PC, our phone, or a Raspberry Pi to our radio. This is running DigiPi, and it's a standalone suite of ham tools like FT8 and RTTY, send and receive, all kinds of stuff. This sets itself up as a hotspot. So what you do is you just use your phone or your tablet or your PC and just Wi-Fi into it. And inter interfaces with the radio, so we've got a Nano VNA, but this pretty light duty, pretty small, nice and simple, and we can do full digital modes. Pretty cool. Also have a handheld, an HT. This is the UVK5 that uh, I've modified with the full HF. I bought two of them from AliExpress, uh, pre-modded, they're awesome. You can do 2 meter 440 HF, uh, does AM, FM, so you can pretty much do most things. You can't broadcast outside of uh, the 2 meter 440, but you can listen. So uh, really cool for listening to HF. It actually works really good. This is the power supply system I made. Pretty simple. Inside here is a 6 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, and I chose to armor it in a case because why not nice and durable and then i sealed xt60 waterproof connectors in here one high power one with heavy wire the rest are small wire and then a usb power supply with nice little handy voltmeter so we can do usb c and usb a from here and that can power everything and then some all at once i have a solar panel as well you may have noticed it in the opening shot I'm not covering that here because I haven't tested it yet. Simple way to charge this. Plug in here, plug into the car accessory port. This is a, a pretty close to the same as a lead acid battery and your car alternator just sees it as a load and charges it. It's no problem. Power supply for the radio. That's to charge the HF radio. Software defined radio. Pretty handy in case, well, wanna do things with SDR on my laptop, I can. This is a GPS dongle that can plug into the Raspberry Pi so we can get our time sync from GPS satellites. That way we can use the digital modes like a, a JS8 call, FT8, that kind of thing. I'm not sure, I haven't used either of those yet, so I'm not familiar with which ones need the accurate time sync. You guys can probably tell me in the chat. I'm looking forward to it though. Looking forward to giving a try and listening in the next couple of days. Antenna wire. This, this pack holds a lot. I deliberately chose a small pack because I wanted to limit how much junk I could add. It turns out it fits a lot. So uh, 
uh, BNC cable. This isn't the best coax, but it's plenty good enough at a 25 foot run. Two different antennas in here in just dollar store pencil cases. And this is the nine to one, so the, the counterpoise and antenna wire off of that. And then I think this one, I have an end fed, a standard end fed in here. Yep. Very cool. Another antenna for my HT, lots of jumpers for going between the radio and the tuner, tuner and amp. Nice handy J-pole antenna for the two meter radio. You just hang this up. This is actually the, the one from eBay. I forget the ham's name. It's, there we go. And uh, yeah, super good, really good reception. You hang this in your house and it works great. Oh. Now in the background here, I'm not going to undo it because it's kind of a pain. This is a 24 foot fishing pole. They call them a crappie pole. I guess some people fish for crappie with them. There's no uh, eyelets, no nothing. It's just a long extendable fiberglass pole. And that is what I use to hang my antennas up. Along with this, this is a, a fishing pole rod holder. And uh, yeah, it just threads out of there, threads into here, stick it in the ground. I saw this on Julian's video on Survival Tech Nord and uh, in the background of one of his videos and I looked it up and yeah, it's awesome. Super, super light. The first one of these I ordered was weighed a ton. This is completely unnecessary, but I live close to, I think it's the third, third largest nuclear power plant in the world. So it's reasonable to expect if I did have an emergency where I needed to talk in an emergency, probably would involve radiation. So why not have a dosimeter? This is a common mode choke that I just made, standard ferrite. This is uh, for this antenna so that uh, any common mode current that's coming back across the shield, uh, it travels uh, along the skin, um, the outside of the shield of the coax. This this will filter it right out. Uh, known one to one choke, common mode choke, lots of different names for it, but simple stuff. Don't need to buy them, easy to make. A ferrite in case I want to just clamp one on. That will also do similar, but not near as good as this. This will do a lot better job. And a light sticks, just dollar store chemical lights. Never know. Nice little handy flashlight. And a two meter tape measure style antenna that uh, is a big long bugger and uh, yeah nice to have why not one last thing. writing utensils so i'm pretty happy with this i like having a notepad i'm a big fan of pen and paper but i like this even better so what i did is i went and i <laughs> stuck the nuclear guidelines in there yeah i stuck the uh, the manual for that radio because I, I i'm not familiar with that two meter radio yet but the uh the quan shang uv uh, k5s i just printed the quick start guide for the firmware that i'm running i laminated it on these um four by six laminated cards and stuck it in here and then well if you're familiar with s2 underground there's the ghost net instructions as well uh in here somewhere that I appear to have lost is uh, markers that are wet erase markers that we can write on here. And then I also have paper, pen, and yeah, actually here's the wet erase markers. There we go, wet erase and a spare pen. So this isn't right in the rain, but uh, I think it'll do the job. I like it. So that is everything. It fits all in this tiny single strap backpack and it fits nice and it's not heavy. This stuff is light, it's super, super light on the battery on the lithium and then two with batteries in them. And yeah, pretty much I can talk around the world. I can talk down the street and listen to digital modes. Pretty happy with it. Let me know what you think.